Hi, I'm Spencer Cohen, and today I will talk about the big thing on my head, or what I call an afro. An afro is just a big ball of hair. A lot of people comment on my hair saying, hey, Spencer, nice fro, or you should get that thing cut, or can you fit a pencil in there, and, well, it's in there, I can't get it out. Ah, <laughs> oh, here it is, yeah, it was a little tangled. <laughs> the only comment I have not gotten was, hey, Spencer, the 70s called, they want their afro back. I'm here to tell you, don't be somebody you aren't, be you. That is the main reason why I grew on my hair. Express yourself through the way you dress, the way you talk, the people you love, and the way you style your hair. Hair can define you. If you have super perfect hair, people can assume that you're hardworking because you worked hard on your hair. Or you can have luscious locks and people will think you're a living version of Marilyn Monroe. Also, people judge you on your hair color. In a 2010 study conducted by the Queensland University of Technology, it suggested that a woman with blonde, long, blonde hair gets paid 7% more than a woman with different color hair. And according to an article in Forbes, it said a contractor complained about some of his workers being late to the work site. He called them long-haired slackers. Can you believe he blamed them being late on their hair? <laughs> when my dad was in college, which was all the way back in the 70s, he grew out his hair so it could be an afro. He decided to grow out his hair because he never had an afro before and he wanted to see what it would look like. Because of his hair, my dad was known as the fun and chill guy, and he still is today. Because of his hair, I decided to grow out mine. And ever since, people know me as the guy with the best hair. The Afro hairstyle was first formed by P.T. Barnum's Circassian Beauties, who were also called Moss-Haired Girls. At the time, the hairstyle was not originally called an Afro. During the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s, the Afro played a major political role. At this time, the black society was pushing for equal rights. The Civil Rights Movement triggered a change in the way black people saw themselves naturally, including their hair texture. In the African American community, there was a new appreciation for black hair resulting in the popular phrase, black is beautiful. Another hairstyle that is very similar in many ways is called an Israel or a Jufro. And yes, it's an actual term. Some people with Jufros are Seth Rogen, Will Ferrell, Jonah Hill, Andy Samberg, and surprisingly, the rapper Drake. <laughs> hair plays a big role in music, myths, movies, sports, fairy tales, and much more. Some singers with very well-known hairstyles are Pink, Billy Preston, and Bob Marley. But I think the person with the best hair is a painter named Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross's fro is absolutely amazing. I think he should have canceled his old show, The Joy of Painting, and started a new show called The Joy of My Hair. <laughs> but does hair really measure your success? In the vlog The 538, it said that girls with long hair are associated with decreased forcefulness and high maintenance, and that gray hair on a man makes them seem more professional, and that gray hair on a woman makes her seem like a less desirable employee. <laughs> Did you know that the average woman spends 14 hours a year at the hairdresser? This adds up to 36 days over a lifetime. <laughs> and also, did you know that the hair industry makes $5 billion, $500 billion a year? To put that into context, that's Bill Gates' net worth oh, times six. <laughs> if it's just because it makes you feel good, then great. You should spend a lot of time on your hair. But if it's because you feel pressure to conform, then you should just let your hair be what it is. Like me, I just have to spray some water on my hair and then I'm done. This afro may not be a burden, but it is something that definitely identifies me. My hair makes me, me. Thank you.